So it's a brief discussion and then guys again. You can argue with me, disagree with me, throw whatever you want at me. You're not gonna hurt my feelings. Just stand over and go by what's in the book. Um all right, forensic drug analysis. Uh, and we had the OSBI guy come up here several years ago. And uh, I did not realize this, I should have, but when he said this, this is years ago. He made the comment, uh, you know, whenever they find the stems and leaves and, and uh, pieces in, in your car thing, they actually take those back to the lab and they don't just testify, this is when marijuana was illegal. They don't just testify, say, yeah, we found stem. They physically plant the seed Some and they wait to grow up so they can definitely say, yes, this is marijuana. That's that's not fair, though. Because, like, you can grow a male or a female plant, but, like, male plants don't produce marijuana. Well, yeah, but catnip is not illegal, so. No, you mean male plants don't produce blood? Yeah, they don't produce blood. One of the plants is catnip and the other is marijuana. But yes, I agree. Catnip but they, catnip. Marijuana looks the so are you telling me they're the same plant? Catnip ain't no real plant. One, one is, yeah, it's catnip is a real plant. Beauty, it's a real, yeah, it's the same plant. One's a male version, one's a female version. Uh, it's, 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 it's a catnip. Catnip is, and I forget which one, catnip is the one version and, and uh, marijuana is the other. Because the female version don't buzz. Like so, but yeah, but they plant it and when it grows up, they said, yes, this is I use the milk. And, and honestly, and again, disagree or not, it's up to you. But how many people are going to walk around and smoke cat? I mean, because that's your other option. I know some old people that smoke cat. I really do. I know old people that smoke cat. Okay. They're about 10 years older than you are. Okay. Okay. Forensic drug analysis. We're talking about in the lab. The lab work for forensics. As you can see, 60% of the lab work that a forensic lab does is all about drugs. 85 to 90% of all cases are drug related. A lot, a lot of uh, states and courts are figuring we're going to get rid of the, the problem and we're just going to stop. Uh, they're going to they, uh, make drugs not against the law. That way we don't have to worry about the court system. Oh. I mean, again, if you guys are 18 years of age and older and you register to vote, if that's what you want to do, go with it. But again, you're, you're, it's all about the way it's voted and whether you agree or not, that's fine. I mean, we can disagree as long as we don't come to blows and fight. We throw. Okay, so. Addiction is on your study guide. What is addiction? You can read this. Some this is not the definition. What is addiction? Shelf on it, please. A severe tendency that causes an overwhelming or irritated desire for a particular. If you're addicted, does it have to be the drugs? No. We had somebody from one of those uh, like movie daddy center a few years ago come in. Addiction is a, it's a family trait. Uh, we had this discussion, I don't think it was this, it may have been this class, but if it was not in the morning class, uh, one of my students asked if I drink alcohol. I haven't had alcohol in 40 years. They said, why? Because my mother's an alcoholic, my grandmother was an alcoholic. I mean, addiction runs in a family. Okay? Addiction yes. can run in your blood. It can run in the family. It's a genetic. It's a genetic it's component. There is a genetic component it's of addiction. Yes. Like That's why I would drink a little bit so young. Well, it's a genetic, it's a genetic, there's, that's not the only reason, but there, there's a genetic component to addiction. <laughs> and if you don't, if you are, if you have that genetic component in there, this is not a biology class, if you have that genetic component in there, I'm not necessarily going to become an alcoholic. I can become addicted to something else, you know, gambling. It's, it's something to do with your genetics. <laughs> that tendency is there. Where do you where do you channel that tendency? Okay, so it's in your brain. Depression, genetics. Am I going to be a gambler? Am I going to be a you know whatever? You're going to have that type of thing going. Since you've been the one participating the fastest and the quickest, take it, take it draw. Just randomly grab them. I got you. Were number two. 
Physical versus psychological addiction. Again, there are withdrawal symptoms with physical, okay? People back in the early 1900s, morphine's been out for a while. Opium was about uh, the opium dims. Hang on to that. I got two. Oh. Did you get the one you like? No. Uh, okay. What? Been the big since yes, it has. 5,000 years ago. Okay. But they used it in England and, and China. Can I say that one more time? I can hear you. Opium has been around for 5,000 years. Uh, during the 18, 17, 1800s, they had opium dens where people would go in there and they would smoke through hookahs. Uh, opium. Yes. Water pipes. <laughs> Sucking through the water pipes. Okay, but they would soak. That's a lot of opium. Yes, and it was. It, it's addictive. It's an addictive substance. Okay. Uh, during the 1800s, they had the opium wars, where European countries were fighting over that in Asia. So this is something that goes on. Okay. But it's you do get physical symptoms of withdrawal when you stop taking drugs. Uh, it's not, and sometimes they're physical. You feel, physically feel the pain. That's why people we have an opium problem in the United States. Several drug companies were sued for multi-million dollar settlements for the mere fact that they were pushing opium. My wife. She can take Loratadine all day, all night, and she doesn't feel it. But you go to Oklahoma here, you go to the doctor, and every doctor prescribes that. Flip it over. You also have psychological. Sometimes the pain you feel is not physical, it's psychological. Okay, because of dopamine. Classifications, and this was on your study guide, opium, opiates, it's narcotics, okay, stimulants, okay, amphetamine, cocaine, nicotine, nicotine, where do you get that from? Tobacco. Tobacco. Or just nicotine. And tobacco is a, it is also, it's addictive. Oh, yeah. That's why you have problems stopping smoking. That's why they put nicotine in the vapes. Because mm -hmm. yeah, about 100 hours after it goes out, you have another hit. <laughs> Hallucinogens, LSD. Again, they actually, the government actually pushed this on people in the 60s and 70s. Tried to get people hooked on it because they were using it as trying to prove that they could do it. Uh, one of the, when I, I mentioned that uh, one of the soldiers when I went in the army, one of my soldiers when I reported for unit, he had been arrested for selling LSD. And I was, I had to get him to court. But he was, he was a driver of one of my tanks for six months before we had to take him to court. Okay. Marijuana. Hallucinogen. Hallucinogen. Yes. Hallucinogen. It means you hallucinate. I'll never hallucinate. It's psychoactive. You ain't no smoke gas, bro. Okay. <laughs> Okay, but most are not normally not physical or psychologically offended. So you don't get a lot of addiction on that, but you can have some. Depressants. Okay. Depre and again, a lot of these are depressants. Pills for people with mental uh, incapabilities. Absolutely. Yeah. Guys, sometimes you need it. Biscuit. What'd you get? Biscuit. Biscuit. I have no idea. I just hand them out. You can them in your throat. Okay? Valium. That's the little pill that the women used to do in the 1800s and the drink. Okay? Yeah, there's only one of me. Now, these are the schedule of drugs. I got, and she did ask. I didn't need the whole paragraph on the schedule. Schedule one is what? No medical use, approved medical use, and abuse. Wait, I need, I need to see this. I need to see this. I really need to see this. Okay. 
So if this doesn't get turned in, I don't care how good an essay it is, you ain't getting no credit for it. So what we can do is everybody got their own. There's no copying, there's no way. So what you can do is if you want to make sure, hey, if you're the type that loses stuff, I have to see it to prove it. So if you want to come up here and write it, write, not now, write your name and the drug you got and prove to me that's what you got, and I'll okay it. Or you can just go with what you got. And we're not, I'm not swapping. What you got is what you got, unless you can swap with somebody out there. Yeah, okay. 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 I grew up cocaine. I was just fucking, bro. Okay. Yeah, you got uh, ketamine, bro. Not heavy. What's that? Uh, keto. Bevedo. <laughs> I'm going to have to. That's a form of medicine. That's a form of, yeah. All okay. right. So, schedule one product. No currently accepted medical use. Marijuana used to be that way. In some states, it is now Schedule Two. Okay, the, the the jail terms you get are based on the schedules. Schedule One drugs, you get a higher jail term than Schedule Two. You can still get arrested for them if you abuse them. Schedule Two, cocaine, hydrocodone. If you abuse this. Illegally sell it, you still go to jail. The schedule one drugs, I've got the right, I can't, I don't have the right to use it because there's no me medical use. Again, in Oklahoma, there is. Why is psilocybin a non medical use? Unless you're Native American tribe, you can't use it, it's illegal. Wait, hey, use what? My so mom, you can my use, mom has to get. So you can use peyote. I can use that. Peyote? If, you, peyote, if you are a member of the Native American church, you can use peyote. Oh, you got to be a member of the church. You got to be a member of the Native American church. But you got to have your card and stuff. You got to have like a truck, your CBD card. Just because you're Native American doesn't mean you can use it. You got to so physically say, have say a lot of area of Native American. You're not, you're not Native American. Don't work. My mom had one. You have yeah. physically got to be Native American and be part of the Native American tribe. I don't want to do it. I was just curious. It's like you can't you can't hunt whales in the United States, but if you're a member of the Inuit in Alaska, they can legally hunt whales, but you can't. Okay, Schedule Three, medical use, somewhat addicted. Okay. Miley, Morphine. Miley. What? M MDMA is Molly. That's what people call it. Yeah. Okay. Schedule four, you do have a medical use, very low addictive potential. Xanax, Valium. But those are all proven like more addictive yeah. than like everything else on the And again, this is all illegal. This has got nothing to do with doctors. When I was first diagnosed with diabetes 25 years ago. They specifically don't drink Coca-Cola, drink Diet Coke. That's what you need. Now they're coming out and finding out Diet Coke's even worse for you than regular Coke for diabetes. Because oh, so your body good. still sees the fact that it's got quote-unquote sugar in it, but there is no sugar, so your body starts looking for other means of it, and it's worse for you. That, so just because it's right, it has to make it through the trial. What is Spino Jackson's on? Uh, I have to look it up. There's hundreds of them out there. And by the way, some of these guys you may have to search. I know I don't know which ones you guys got, but some of these things are hard to find. They're, every one of these is on the internet. I've looked them all up. But some of them you got to you can't just do a Wikipedia search. It's there, but it's going to be a little bit hard to find. Got to go to news reports. All right, okay, analysis sequence. When you are when you are a police officer, when you are a laboratory technician. How do you determine? Well, you're gonna first off you look at 
Does it look rock-like? Does it look powdered? Is it kind of wet? You make some sort of judgment call. You don't know if it's a drug yet, but you're going to look at it. Possible drug. Okay? Then you're going to actually do a screening test. There's a lot of them that have little test kits. Take a scoop of the, of the drug, scoop it up, put it in there, shake it up. Does it turn the right color? Okay? Screening for marijuana. There's actually a THC screening they have to do. Okay? Turns the black purple when you get it. I don't know what here knows. Okay? You have to everything before, and this fact, this is one question on the study guide. How can a, a laboratory technician do it? You've got to be able to confirm everything. I've got to be able to sit in the court of law and say, I know that, and I'm making this, I'm just making the thing up. I know this is marijuana because of the following tests. Okay. And I was mentioning the fact in Turkey, the drugs over there is really bad. If a laboratory technician runs a test and finds a, we know it's THC or whatever, the level is too high, you should go to jail. If they recheck the figures and they find out that the laboratory te uh, technician made a mistake, he goes and serves the term of the guy that was improperly convicted. So I want to make sure that there's no, so you've got to be correct. You've got to know what you're doing. People go to jail, and I worked in a lab, not a chem as a chemical lab, not, not, not drug chemical, but chemicals like oil and stuff. I worked in a lab for almost 20 years. And people at Exxon were going to jail for lying about data. And that's not even pharmaceuticals. So if you lie about pharmaceutical drugs, you can go. Uh, gas chromatography, chromatography. I use that thousands of times. Gas chromatography, you can take a sample that is smaller than a drop. And you can shoot it in the machine and it will give you everything about that drug. Everything about that chemical. It'll it's break it down. It's so scary. What? Mass spectrometer. Mass spectrometer. It, it's even more. Yeah. Gas chromatography. Gas chromatography is how you get it. Mass spec is the way that they measure what comes through the gas chromatograph. Liquid chromatograph. It's in a liquid phase. You dissolve it and run it through a machine. Same thing. This is this is vaporized and sent as a gas. This is run as a liquid. This you guys did in grade school. You take a piece of paper, draw a magic marker at the bottom of it, stick it in this mouth hole, and watch it pull up and separate. Okay, but that's liquid. That's a paper chromatography. You never did that. Dude, we should do it in here. I don't have the equipment. I have to go buy it all. Do you see any markers in alcohol? I, I've tried it with what I have. What I have does not work. I don't have the right paper. It's got to be a certain type of paper. But it's great to do. You got to have a special paper to do that. Okay, this is. That would be liquid. That would be thin layer chromatography. Breaks it up, separates it. What you do is at the bottom of this down here, that little dot down the bottom, that is the drug. You stick it in a solvent and it migrates up the paper or whatever medium this is. It migrates up and separates up the parts. And then they look at the pattern and they can tell what it is. Okay. Microscope of marijuana under the microscope. Okay. Color screening tests. These things turn color in certain testing. Ecstasy, cocaine, opiates, amphetamines. It's just the colors they turn when you mix them. Is it about the same thing as, uh, uh, what is that one for pretty? Methamphetamines is short. Meth is short for methamphetamines. Now, we did do, yes. You got to look at the category. Opium, there's an individual drug called opium, but then there's opioids, which they're all either based on opium or they have the same physiological effects as opium. So, so wait, so opium is the, is the, is the father of thousands of drugs. Yes. Yes, if it's a narcotic, it's probably going to be opium related. Right? We're not going to worry about this.
chemical reagent is added, which causes crystals to form. Crystals have different shape. Okay, depending on the shape is depending on what they are. Cocaine on the left, methamphetamine on the right, different crystals. Cobalt three bottle? Yes. Okay, this is an IR. You have an IR is a is a form, it's a wavelength of light. I use this thought as a machine. What you do is you take a thin strip of it, you can do it in powder form, whatever. You put it in a machine, close the machine up, let nitric nitrogen gas flow through there so it gets rid of all the stuff. Hit the button. And these are different wavelengths of light to come through. But oh, that's Prozac, by the way, is, is a legal drug. Prozac is that my wife was actually on Prozac 30 years ago. Okay. With IR screening also. Drug testing, urine is where they mostly get the drugs, the drug testing from. A little pee in a cup, right? And guys, you can't clean that out of your system once it's in there. You gotta just wait for it to come out. I know a lot of people say drink this, drink that. I'm <clears throat> now, don't get me wrong. If it's been long enough, they may say you're not positive, but they'll still see it's there. There's a level. They have a level when they when they test you. That's the level they say is you're you're in trouble for. They see it there. You just haven't reached the level of we're going to throw you in jail type thing. We know you did it, but we you do, you haven't don't have enough in your system to do it. Either. Okay. These are what you get false positives on. Poppy seed bagel, false positive opiates, uh, decongestant met amphetamines, Benadryl. You get a false positive for PCP. I'll, I'll, that's because they examine it and examine the PCP. That's heroin, uh, paraphernalia for heroin. Oh, yeah. The dope yeah, on the spot. Yeah. The famous dope on the spot. You don't have to you see that. You can see that. You can see it right here. Yeah, you can see it. Some of them actually shoot a dodge. Oh, yeah. Good, good, good. Nobody knows what that is, right? Oh, no. I've never seen that before. I don't have to see that. It was like a powder. Yeah, it looks like a very pretty flower. Oh, they are flowers. I know. What kind of flower is it? Okay, so this is just a quick review. Now, on the essay, guys, and you all seen it. So, on the points, it's 100 points. I didn't adjust that, so it's 100 points possible. So, what it is on the front side up here, you're not writing on it other than your name, you're not going to write anything on this. Okay? This is just the drug you've got. And at the top of the thing is the drug, spelled that way. Okay, I got methoquail over here. Okay, spelled that way. The rest of this is the instructions of what I'm looking for. This is an essay. Don't copy paste, guys. There are there are numerous programs out there that I use that I can highlight and import your essay in there, and it'll say bad bad boy. You know, no plagiarism. If I catch plagiarism, put your cell phone down. If I catch plagiarism, you get no credit. At least for the, the content portion. What? What the English teacher said, as long as you put quotation marks and give me a reference of where you got the information from, we're covered. But the entire paper cannot be quoted. You've got to have some of you, okay? Somebody yeah, you can't do the entire thing, quote, two and a half pages, unquote. No, it's got to be something. No, no, no. There is, I don't, I don't think there is. I don't think there is. Yeah, there's no, there's no, there's no. Yeah, I got to understand what you're saying. One paragraph, as long as it's short, it's not enough. You got to answer it, you got to make sense, okay? So. Now, when we do the serial killer essay near the end of six weeks, there is a maximum and minimum size for the thing. But again, this is double spaced. Now, that doesn't mean write a, write a line, hit the enter twice, write a line, hit no. Tell the computer to do double space, 
and just write. And I don't need a cover sheet. I don't need it. You just top line, what's your name? Second line, what's the drug? Third line, start writing. Okay. Answer the questions as a paragraph. And at the bottom, and you don't have to put footnotes, bibliographer. At the bottom, tell me the websites you used. Okay. That way you're covered for all the references and the English teachers don't flip out. Okay. And I'm not an English teacher, so I don't make you have all the headings and stuff. Just, but I do need one inch margin, no bigger than 12 inch, 12 font. Some people will do really, really small font, write a lot on the uh, serial code essay because I only allow them one and a half pages. So they write really, really small. No, 10 to 12 font, typeface. None of the weird curly Q fonts. Make it Arial, Courier, Times New Roman, something simple block lettering. Don't give me 16 font size because you, no, <laughs> consistent, okay? One inch margins. You don't know how to set this. Type it all up, let me know, and I'll show you how to format it. And then you're going to save it, make sure you do a spell check, and send it to me. Then turn this in. I will not grade it if I don't have this. Wednesday next week. You're going to do it in class. I don't want you to do it at home. Okay? I'm never going to ask you to do anything at home. No, no homework at home. Do it here. That way you got. we know you got the technology, and I'm going to be able to time it, okay?